What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Miami Lawyer Daddy here and I am pumped for the Hustler uh, stream this week, the million dollar game, five straight days of one million dollar buy-ins and a thousand dollar big blind minimums with a lot of straddles. Should be sick, although a few things have happened in the last few days, which I guess was inevitable. Tony G pulled out, now Mickey's out, which is kind of the point of this video. Uh, apparently, Mickey is has some terms that he's demanding. I know Mickey is a professional gambler, back rock player, blackjack player. So when he agrees to gamble somewhere, he usually has a term sheet that he makes the uh, casino, or in this case, the host, Ryan and Nick, agree to. It sounds like, uh, based on the post that Ryan posted from Mickey's page this morning on Instagram, that Mickey's out because they failed to uh, agree to pay him. Um, that's not what they said, but in the subtitle or in the caption of the post, it said, pay me what I'm worth or something like that. So um, this came up recently as well. I think uh, it was well known that I forget when it was said, but basically Keating is not in any of the million dollar lineups because and he hasn't played lately because they uh this is you know what has been said on the stream or in other places not confirmed but apparently um keating wants some type of fees or appearance fees or pieces of ad revenue i don't know what it is and they didn't give it to him so um now similarly mickey wants some kind of appearance fee and presumably basically it started this trend of everyone wants appearance fees um i've run a lot of games uh in down here in the miami market over the last 15 years um a lot of them were tiny games when i was in law school lately uh, they've been bigger games um so when you get a big action player um that you know knows they're a losing player so I think it's fair to say that Mickey's a losing player in the average lineup where there's a few pros and then a few decent recreational players and then maybe one or two super action players. Um, you know, sorry, Mickey. I actually really like Mickey. He seems like a really nice guy. I know a lot of the internet thinks he's a scammer. Uh, I don't think so. I don't really know. I don't know him. Whatever. He seems like a nice guy, good personality, All obviously great to watch, but in most lineups, Mickey is going to be a losing player. That's just facts. He's just, it's just facts. Like, I'm not a pro. I don't even need to be a pro. I'm a smart guy. I'm an analytical guy. I can tell Mickey's a losing player in most lineups. Now, of course, the softer the lineup is, he could maybe get to break even. It's hard to really see Mickey ever being a winning player in any lineup, unless maybe he's playing against just eight uh you know bazillionaires who have just learned how to play the game um but no doubt mickey's fun to watch um so i now that this is becoming a recurring topic especially on the eve of the million dollar game i wanted to make a quick video about it because i have a lot of experience in like negotiating the big personalities well you know before a big poker game is coming well i want five thousand uh, dollars to play in the game because i'm huge action and you can build a whole game around me and blah 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 and especially when you know some games are raked um i've never really raked a game per se but i've been involved in games that were raked and i've seen the dynamics i've done a lot of casino games where you don't necessarily have um a specific revenue stream associated with the game that's a guarantee if you run a rake game, you might rake the game 50000 um, If you run a stream game, you might get paid for the stream. So I wanted to make a quick video uh, looking at the economics of the stream games and kind of coming up with an idea of what is reasonable for appearance fees for players for the games. So um, I made a little calculator here um, and... This is just very basic. I'm not by any means a uh, YouTube CPM expert or anything, but from a basic Google search I did, uh, it looks like CPMs on YouTube uh, can range from basically 
a dollar to fifty to sixty dollars a CPM, which is means views per uh, thousand, which then would turn into a penny. A penny would be ten dollar CPM, and then uh, sixty dollar uh, CPM would be six cents per single view, um, and then the. Uh, The main variables are like what the content is. So like cheap content, which is kind of what the hustler falls into. It's more like gaming. Uh, you get a lot of views, but the people viewing really don't buy a lot of stuff. So YouTube can't really charge the advertisers a lot. Um, on the flip side, you have the uh, like really sophisticated channels that are talking about how to create content and how to run affiliate marketing programs. And the people that watch those videos have like dedicated budgets that they're gonna spend on related projects, they're businessmen. Um, and so they're ready to buy stuff for their business quickly so the advertisers can pay a lot more. So we are talking about a lower CPM market here with, with Hustlers content, um, but at the same time, they do make a lot of content. So people that watch the stream, a 10 hour stream is almost more like um, 10 or 20 or 30 videos in one. So the beauty of, you know, the way I did it here is I can adjust everything. So, you know, the way I started it is I have the main stream here, which is the main stream. So let's just say Mickey talked about playing um, one stream. Saturday was the day he was supposed to play. He had some terms negotiated. We don't know, they haven't been released. But as, but he, as he mentioned in his uh, Instagram story, basically they need to get the money right. They need to pay him something. So we don't know what that is, but I'm gonna look through the numbers here and see. So let's just assume that they're gonna make one mainstream for the day, for the specific day, Saturday. Um, that's one video. Then we'll just, I'm gonna be pretty like, um, I guess aggressive in how I give it. I want to kind of make the numbers as big as possible, understanding that this is all hypothetical, but still you got to start somewhere with napkin math as we call it. Um, so one main video, let's just say that uh, that video gets 2 million views, which by the way, the biggest stream that I think they've had so far is the Mr. Beast game, which was 1.3 million views, which had Mr. Beast, Phil Hellmuth, Tom Dwan, and a bunch of other uh, influencers. Um, so if they make one main video from, from the Saturday game, that will be uh, basically about 40,000 in revenue if you do a, two, a $20 CPM. So a $20 CPM divided by 1,000 is two cents, two cents per view, and that would equate to 40K in revenue. Let's just also assume that they make, like they take the 10 best hands that day and they make each one of those a 10 minute review clip and let's just assume that those each get 500,000 views and they can do a little bit of a lower CPM because it's a shorter video. Um, but let's just say they do a $10 CPM, which is a penny per view, and then that brings them in uh, 50,000 in revenue. Um, then of course they have two sponsors right now. They have Prometheus Poker and they have the WPT. Uh, I don't know if there's any publicly available information on that. I highly doubt it. I didn't even search for that because it's probably no chance that there's information about that. But they probably have some type of monthly arrangement, 20,000, 30,000 a month, where they just get you know, all the videos tagged and promoted for them with the, with the signage. And then I think they do some inserts. They also have Only Poker, which might be Nick's company. I'm not sure. I haven't researched that. But the last video only had these two. So... I just put $5,000 of sponsorship revenue for one individual stream. That's probably also way too high. This number might be as low as 1,000. Um, again, we can adjust these. If anybody has any information, we can adjust these. But I kind of just wanted to do this video because I find it super interesting because there's obviously a lot of people that are like, oh, you got to pay these action guys a lot. They're going to come and sit with a million dollars, which is true. But if there's no, like, you can't come up with the money out of thin air. like. Ryan and Nick can't just pay guys uh, $100,000 to show up if they're not making it on the back end somewhere. They can't just, it's just impossible. I mean, they would run out of money quickly and then the stream would die. So as you know, they, they want to protect the stream and they want the content to keep going. So the way I have it here, the gross revenue per stream is 95. 
let's just say they have payroll production for the for the stream is ten thousand. That's probably that's probably high, but you gotta you gotta put a number there and let's just say they gotta do five thousand dollars of random BS like Ubers for people and just you know, just other miscellaneous items that they have to do and get ready for the stream. Um, of course, they have to they had to spend a lot of money on overhead, you know, like uh, big overhead, like building the set and everything. But this is kind of just be like the day of kind of numbers. So this gives you a net income of eighty thousand um, dollars, and that's you know, if they wanted to say, look, uh, we're going to make eighty thousand dollars for the stream, and we're going to spend it all on players, you know, maybe you give. Uh, you say the four biggest action players, we're going to give each of them 20000 obviously, or you could just spend it all on one insane guy um, and then tell everyone else, like, look, you get to play with this crazy guy. We have no more appearance fees for you. So I think it's probably way higher. I mean, it's really hard to say because I'm not an expert, but when you break it down like this and you see um, the numbers, I think it's much likely that the total revenue, the net income from a single really, really big stream is less than $80,000. I think these CPMs are probably high. I think these view numbers are probably high as well. So you might want to bring this net income down to maybe $40,000. And again, even if, which is, even if Mickey was the, by far the biggest action player in the game and everyone was like, I'll, I don't need an appearance fee. I'll just play because Mickey's playing. Um, and you gave him the entire $40,000, uh, does that, you know, it feels like Mickey's probably asking for more than that because if he's willing to sit in a game with a million dollars, does $40,000 really change that much? Um, I don't know. So, um, you know, this is just really basic analysis. Uh, I just, my hunch is that the economics of the stream, um, maybe I'm missing something. You guys point out, like Ryan and Nick don't take pieces uh, of, you know, of anybody on the stream. So that's not a revenue source. Is that true? I don't know. Um, I want to believe it's true. I, Ryan seems like a good guy. But, um, you know, is there other revenue sources that I'm missing here? Uh, is there expenses that I'm missing here? You know, uh, I don't know. So it just doesn't seem like there's enough money in the stream yet with only, they have 250,000 subs um, where they could really move the needle for players with appearance fees on a sustainable basis. Uh, yeah, once in a while, if, if these numbers are correct, could you give a guy 50 grand to play and then let everybody else just have the pleasure of playing with him? Uh, yeah, that might work. But um, I don't know what you guys think about this. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm super pumped for the first game tomorrow. I'm super pumped for the replay of the Bad Brad after hours stream tonight. Um, you know, I think Ryan and Nick are doing an amazing job and everyone's loving the content. Uh, it's as from someone who's run games before, it is so much work to deal with, you know, all these people that are playing in these games, especially the bigger stakes games. These are very demanding people. These are people that run businesses uh, with 10 to 100 people below them. You know, they don't have to do anything ever. I think so when you're running a game that's providing them in, in entertainment, they expect a lot from you. They expect immediate response times. They want to know the lineups. They want to know this. They want to know that. They just, it's very, very demanding when you're dealing with all these big personalities, you know, guys who are willing to have a million dollars and sit down with hundreds of thousands of dollars every day and gamble. Um, they're very demanding. Even the guys who are really nice and have really easygoing personalities, they're not going to come back unless things are just perfect. I know this from experience. So um, lineups need to be good. Games need to start on time. People need to show up. And then if people don't show up, which is inevitable, you need to have backup people and backup backup people. And then there's personalities. Oh, this guy doesn't like this guy. So anyway, it's a lot of work running big games. A lot. You don't realize it um, from just watching the, the final product on YouTube. So I'm pumped to watch these streams and I really hope they come out great. Uh, I hope uh, Mickey can figure out a deal 
uh, with Ryan because Mickey's super fun to watch. But if he wants some kind of insane number, like 100000 or more, or probably, I mean, honestly, if they are willing to pay him anything, I would, my intuition would be like 25000 you know, it's probably the max. Um, a lot of these guys, like a guy like Eric Person or Stanley Tang or these other businessmen, I don't think they care about appearance fees. They're very, very wealthy. And for them, you know, even though, even if they might be losing players too, for them, you know, what is, if they're going to buy with a million dollars, what do they care if they get a 20K rebate? Like they're worth billions or at least hundreds of millions. So I think they just want to make sure that they're taken care of. That matters more to them than a 20 or 30K rebate. But for Mickey, it matters. Uh, so I understand his position. I'm not saying that he's wrong uh, to do what he's doing. You just, you know, from my experience, like I, I've done a ton of negotiations with the insurance companies on my injury cases, and you have to, you know, if the case, if if the threat isn't there, like if the money's not there on the back end from Ryan and Nick, the money's just not there. You can't ask for money that doesn't exist. So if the total revenue stream is going to be a hundred k, Mickey can't ask for a hundred k. That's that's ridiculous. He's not he's not the same size as the stream itself. Is he a fifth of the stream? Maybe you know. Is he a third of the stream, potentially based on the lineup? Is he 100% of the stream? Definitely not. So again, if the stream somehow don't, doing a half a million, which I highly doubt, then maybe Mickey could be worth 100. But I don't even think the stream's doing 100,000 of net income on a single night, which means that Mickey asking for anywhere but north of 20K is just probably just fantasy land stuff. So um you know, you have to just be based in reality, right? Like I can't ask an insurance company for $10 million on a case where there's no way the jury will ever give my client more than half a million. It's just, they're just gonna laugh at me. It's just not possible. Um, no matter how good I, of a job I do, you know, on my case, the same way, no matter how good of action Mickey is, is gonna bring, if the revenue isn't there on the stream, it's just impossible for Ryan and Nick to get him that money. So um, we'll see, I doubt any real information will ever come out uh, about this, um, although transparency is becoming much more popular uh, with YouTube channels and numbers and everything. But so I don't know. I'm rambling now. Uh, if anyone has any feedback about uh, you know how I can make these calculations better, um, obviously this is extremely just rough math. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. See you soon.